Hey y'all, Paul Kilo Juliet 5 Golf Kilo Kilo the Southern Ham and today I'm coming to you with the second in my video series about POTA gear for the beginner. Basically what does the beginning POTA operator, whether they're new to the hobby completely like they just got their their general class ticket or their technician's ticket um, and they want to get into POTA or other portable operation programs, or they've been a ham for years um, operating from the shack, but are now interested in getting outside and doing something a little different and getting involved in portable operations. So what I wanted to focus on was uh, what I've learned in my year of operating POTA um, that might be helpful to those folks. Why don't y'all come along? So in this series, uh, video number one was about antennas, shared that information. This will be a much shorter video than that. Uh, today we're going to talk about two, two things, radios and batteries. Radios and batteries, and we're going to limit it to that. So let's start with radios. This is uh, the most expensive piece of the kit, obviously. But let me sum it up right at the beginning with this. The radio you have is the best radio for portable operations. Whatever you've got will work. Um, there's no such thing as a radio that can't be taken out portable unless it's just one of the huge, massive, old <laughs> kit radios. But in, in new radios, especially all the new uh, Yesus and Icoms and others, um, th they can all be taken out portable. So let me tell you my story. So when I got my ticket back in the, uh, May of 2024, um, my first idea was I got to go to Huntsville Ham Fest, and I did, and I stopped by the Giga Parts store, and I was lucky enough to get this Yesu FT710 on a great deal. It's I got the AESS uh, version, which has the side speaker, and uh, that's the radio I had. So for the first year of my HF, you know, life, uh, both in the shack and portable, this. FT710 was my one and only HF radio. This radio has been out in the field with me on over, well over a hundred POTA activations. Um, it is a great POTA radio. It's a great portable radio. Um, I have an Apache case cut to fit and it fits right in that Apache case that I take out portable when I, when I go with it. Um, but the, the, what's the, the negative side, and why did I ever think about changing radios? Well, I now, a year later, am using the FT891. Uh, the, eight, the 710 weighs about 10 and a half pounds. Uh, the 891 weighs about four and a half pounds. The form factor is so much smaller. This slides right into a backpack. I have an Explorer sleeve from Giga Parts for this radio, and it slides right into my backpack. Um, but going back to my s initial statement, the radio you have is the best possible radio for, for portable operations. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages to every radio, so let's talk about a few things. So, if you haven't yet bought an HF radio for portable, uh, the first thing you got to decide is whether I'm spend, you know, spending the money for new or whether I'm going to go with uh, something from the used market. Go to a ham fest. I'll be honest with you. Recently at the at the, this year's uh, the 25 Huntsville Ham Fest, there were lots and lots of uh, radios in the swap meet area uh, for sale at fantastic prices. There were some old Kenwood radios um, that were $300 that were great shack in a box. Uh, I don't I don't know all the model numbers. That's not important. My point is is that if you look far hard enough, you can find an HF radio without spending a whole lot of money on new equipment. You can go to your local club and borrow a radio. You can find an Elmer that's willing to help you out, maybe give you a loaner or, or maybe sell you a, 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 an older radio they're not using currently. Um, but look around. So new versus used is important. When it comes to new radios, I'll be honest with you, I spent the first year from May of 24 to May of 25 owning only the 710 uh, that I got such a good deal on at Gigaparts back in 24, um, and I waited a full year before I bought the 891, and I was fortunate enough 
the day before Huntsville Ham Fest to pick it up on a great deal at Giga Parts as well. So if you're patient, you can find new equipment at, at good prices. Um, these things do fluctuate and they go on sale from time to time. You just have to, to, to look for that and to watch. Um, the, there's a, one of the huge differences between the two radios is the FT710 has an internal tuner. So that gives me the ability and did all of the activations that I was using it. I was able to use non-resonant antennas like 71 foot uh, in-fed random wire antenna or 41 foot in-fed random wire um, and tune those random wire antennas using the, ma the, the matching unit uh, in the 710. It is capable of tuning uh, at least to three to one, um, but it, I've found that it actually can handle even higher than that um, and make the radio happy with those uh, non-resonant antennas. So now that I have the 891 and I don't have an external tuner, I make sure that I use resonant antennas. So with the 891, I'm using in-fed uh, in half waves. Um, I have a 17 foot vertical that I make sure that I tune it and use my rig expert stick uh, 230 to make sure I get it to a, a good SWR so that the radio is happy. Um, but these aren't the only two radios in the world. This is Yesu. Um, ICOM has fantastic radios. Kenwood. Um, one of the most, one of the other questions I guess you have to, to decide for yourself is, do you want to operate QRP, meaning low power levels? QRP basically is power levels less than 20 watts or 20 watts and less. There's arguments about that, but um, are you going to operate QRP or like me, are you going to want to operate QRO, which is barefoot 100 watts? and higher actually, but this radio is a 100 watt radio on HF. Um, so you have to make that decision because you can operate QRP with the 891. Uh, for example, you just turn the power level down. You can turn it down to 10 watts if you want. Um, but you can also buy radios like the Zygu G90, which is one of the most, it's a Chinese made radio. It's one of the most popular POTA radios out there for those that enjoy QRP, that want to operate at five watts or 10 watts or even two watts or one watt. You can turn the thing down as low as you want. Uh, but if QRP is your thing, the G90 might be something to consider. The G90 has a fantastic tuner in it. It is, it's a uh, claim to fame actually is its internal tuner. It can tune a fence post um, and make the radio happy. So. Uh, the G90 is certainly a radio that you might want to consider taking a look at. Um, I'm in, I actually love this 891. Uh, it's just the audio on it is fantastic. The filtering on it is fantastic. And that's why I think overall the, the FT891 is probably the most common uh, portable radio out there. So, okay, so let's sum up radio. So, new versus used, QRP versus QRO, internal tuner or not. Am I willing to use resonant antennas or do I need a tuner? Um, of course, you can always buy an external tuner uh, as an additional piece of kit uh, to make, uh, for example, a radio like the 891 uh, happy. Um, but the summary is just what I said in the very beginning. The radio you have is the best radio for portable operations. So that sums up radios. Get one, get out there, and have fun with whatever rig you have. Now. Let's talk about batteries. Okay, so let's talk about batteries. Um, obviously, to power a radio portable, you have to be able to get, get juice to it. The most common way to do that is with these fantastic, we live in a wonderful age, I'll be honest with you, LifePo4 batteries that are made by various manufacturers. They come from everybody. BioNO Power, EcoWorthy, um, WattCycle, I could go on and on. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of companies now that are making these wonderful lightweight LifePo4 batteries um, that are perfect for uh, portable operations. The first battery that I ever owned was this little jewel right here, which is a BioNO 6 uh, amp hour battery. And um, it comes with Anderson power poles. This is the charging port, barrel connector for the, for the charging port. And this little BioNO uh, jewel uh, actually worked. I powered my FT710 on my first several activations with this six amp hour battery. Now, you're not gonna operate for hours and hours 
on a six amp hour battery pulling 100 watts, right? But um, it certainly got the job done. What I ultimately did was I built a battery box for the uh, six amp hour battery and now I use this battery box to run things like my, my fan and to charge my phone and things like that. So I use it more as an accessory charging port and uh, it's fantastic. So that's the six amp hour BioNO. The next battery that I bought was a little bit larger. I went to a 10 amp hour battery. This is from EcoWorthy. EcoWorthy makes fantastic batteries in my opinion. So this little 10 amp hour battery um, is, uh, gives me a little bit more time on the radio than the 6 amp hour BioNO did. Uh, fantastic battery, very economical, great price on these things, great price. So what I did for that was not to have a nice protected way to carry it around, I simply took one of these small boxes that I have, put in a little Velcro in the bottom of it, and the EcoWorthy battery simply drops in and Velcros right to the bottom of the right to the bottom of the case. Charging cable sits inside, ready to go. And uh, that's the 10 amp hour battery. So where am I now? What do I run my operation on, off of now? Now you've seen this in my video. So this is my, my POTA battery box. Uh, I've done a video on this box. I'll link that video above. Inside here, I have a 20 amp hour eco-worthy battery. Um, now, the 20 amp hour eco-worthy battery has never died on me during an activation. I have done 140, I forget, 143, 144 total POTA activations in the last year. Uh, it has never died on me. Uh, I have done three park roves and it has lasted for three parks. Um, now, my typical activations are 30 minutes to couple of hours at most. Um, I don't, I'm not one typically to go and sit in one park for four, five, six hours. If that's what your interest is, like if you're a camper and you like to go camping and set up and operate portable for hours on end, you're gonna need a larger battery. So you're gonna need a 50 amp hour, maybe even a 100 amp hour battery. Um, but the great news is, is that in today's market, those batteries are very, very uh, reasonably priced these days, considering what they give you for the money. So the important thing is LifePo 4. Uh, they are lightweight. Um, they uh, provide the proper uh, voltage to your radio. Um, they charge quickly and they allow for multiple charging, thousands and thousands of charging cycles over their lifetime. You just have to find what works for you. I'm on a budget, I'm a retired guy. So ham radio has to fit into my retirement budget. I'm not out there just uh, trying to spend all the money in the world and without you know any care. I'm very price conscious about what I try to do um, and I want to make sure that uh, anybody that's new to radio understands you don't have to spend tons and tons of money. So to summarize this video, let's just leave it at this. You need, from a radio battery perspective, you need two items. You need a radio Figure out where you are in that new, used, QRP, QRO, um, internal tuner, non, no internal tuner. Put all those things in the mix and figure out what, uh, what fits you best and find the radio that you can afford and that will get the job done and get out there and go portable. You have to have a battery. If you're price conscious, I think the 20 amp hour is a good place to start. If you find that it's not enough to act, you know, to power your activations, move up to a 50 amp hour or 100 amp hour battery. But I think the two things you can do to get started is a radio that fits your criteria and that you can afford and a 20 amp hour LiPo 4 battery. So this sums up the video today on batteries and radio and uh, radios. Um, I appreciate y'all coming along. Third video will be coming soon and that video will focus on coaxial cable and connectors. I appreciate y'all coming along. Thanks for watching the channel 73.